Let's talk about Elizabeth Warren for a little bit, right? And then I've got a few Super Chat questions uh, that we can discuss, a couple of Super Chat questions. Um, wow. I mean, Elizabeth Warren is scary. Is scary. And she's scary because she exudes a certain type of competence. She knows her stuff. She has a plan for everything and detailed plans. And, and you put aside that you can't pay for it. You can't, she probably can't do them all. But she is an organized authoritarian. Whereas the current president, I think, is a disorganized authoritarian. She is an organized authoritarian. She knows exactly what buttons to push if she gains power in order to secure maximum power over our lives. I don't think there's ever been. I mean, Bernie Sanders makes Elizabeth Warren. I mean, sorry, the other way around, right? Elizabeth Warren makes me want to vote for Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is a moderate, primarily because Bernie Sanders is much more like Donald Trump. He has this general idea of what he wants, but he's not organized. He couldn't get it passed. He'd piss everybody off. He's, he's clumsy. He's not focused, systematic. Elizabeth Warren's a lawyer. Systematic. Organized. Thorough. She knows exactly what she wants. And what she wants is socialism in America. I mean, not the social democratic Denmark-style socialism. No. She wants real socialism in this country. Real socialism. She wants basically the workers to control everything. She'll never say it. And she said, I'm not a socialist. She says she wants to save capitalism from itself. But if you read her plans, they reek of the socialist rhetoric. They reek of the workers uniting to take over the world. I mean, every single part of it. I mean, it's all about, it's all about the government and the workers' control of the means of production. All of her plans in one way or another, boil down to the government controlling the means of production. Now, granted, she's not a socialist as much as she is really a fascist. She wants you to pretend you still have private property. She wants you to pretend you still have a corporation. She wants you to pretend you still own your home. She wants you to pretend you still own your own small business. She wants you to pretend you own your life. But she has a plan on how to run it. How to run it. Now somebody asked, how does Sanders, Juan, and Yang differ from each other? All right, so first, if I had to choose between those three, I would tomorrow vote for Yang. As compared to Warren and Sanders, Yang comes across as reasonable, thoughtful, connected to reality. I mean, wrong. I disagree with him. And lots of his plans are kind of silly. And he has too many plans. And again, he wants to control everything. But it doesn't strike me that he's going to get any of those plans or that it faced with reality that he would actually go with those plans. Yang actually strikes me as somebody you could reason with to some extent. You could talk to. He's not that smart. Okay. But he's not that evil either. Sanders and Warren are evil. I'd vote for Yang over Trump. I'd vote for Sanders probably over Trump. I can't vote for Elizabeth Warren over Trump. So to me, Yang is the best. And I, I mean, I'm hoping, I really am hoping that Yang wins the Democratic nomination because I think he would be so much better than anybody else. And he would be 
Like he would be learning on the, he's not a politician, so he'd have to learn how to do all this stuff. It would be great. We'd have the divided government. Nothing much would get done. He'd never get his UBI thing passed. I mean, nothing would get done, and he seems like a pretty reasonable guy. He'd probably appoint some reasonable people around him. He, he's not a radical. He's not, he's, not, he's not a crazy lefty. He might say some crazy lefty things because he has to appeal to the Democratic base, but he's not a crazy lefty. Sanders is a crazy lefty, is an authoritarian, is a socialist, is a thug, but I think he's incompetent. I don't think he can run the government. I think, I think Congress would stalemate him and nothing would happen. Elizabeth Warren is smart. She's organized. She, 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 even her lies are, I mean, other than the stupid American Indian, which, you know, she's, she, she might lose because of that. Uh, but she is devious. She's been a senator. She knows how Congress works. She could get stuff done. She could get stuff done. So by the, those are the three choices I got. I, you know, uh, people ask him about Tulsi. Tulsi's crazy. I mean, but, but yeah, I mean, Tulsi would be better than, than certainly Warren and, uh, and Sanders. I, I think Biden would be better, but Biden, I don't think, has a chance. I think Biden is going to lose. So it, you have to look for somebody to replace Biden because the Biden corruption, and I have no doubt that Biden's son is corrupt uh, and that Biden facilitated that corruption. Um, that is coming out. You know, that is coming out. There's no way to avoid that. And the Democrats are going to start thinking about, do they really want to put Biden up there? They saw what happened with Hillary when, you know, lock her up and all that, what Trump, Trump ran all over Hillary over that. To put up Biden is just, you know, it's going to be a replay. Now, supposedly Hillary is, uh, is thinking of running. Wow, wow, that would be something. Hillary, back again. I think the Democratic Party would be suicidal and nuts to take Hillary. But you know what? I'll take Hillary over Warren. So a few interesting things about Elizabeth Warren. On trade, she agrees with Trump. She wants fair trade. She wants, um, she wants uh, you know, there to be a, a, a trade advisory committee, an advisory committee that helps negotiate these trade deals but that will prioritize the views of workers and consumers. So probably be a union run by the unions. Yeah, I will ensure that there are more representatives from labor, environmental, and consumer groups than from corporations and trade groups on every existing advisory committee. There you go. Every trade deal will have to be, uh, there, there would have to be a regional impact study to, to figure out you know, to figure it out. Um, uh, let's see, where am I going here? One second. I'm just trying to catch up with all these super chats. Um, there would be a trade, there would be commissions, there would be regional analysis. You know, uh, uh, you know if some region in the country suffered, they would, they'd have to weigh it against the benefits and maybe compensate that region for the suffering, right? We would, um, we would use our leverage to demand more for American families and to raise the global standard of living. So what the hell does that mean? We, we, you know, we'll insist as part of the trade agreements, this is fair trade, this is what the left has always wanted, that uh, all these countries improve their records with regard to labor, environmental, and human rights. That would be tied in with trade. Fair trade. It's what Trump wants. Uh, you could go on and on. On and on. Of course, we'll have, as part of the Green New Deal, there's going to be a Green New Deal. Well, as part of that, there's going to be a Green Marshall Plan. We're not only are we going to turn our economy into a green economy, by spending tens of trillions of dollars. We're going to then spend $100 billion for other countries to do this, but $100 billion is not going to be enough, right? 
and on and on and on and on and on. I mean, the, these plans are long. She goes, and I've already done something about her Economic Patriotism Act and, you know, raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour and having all corporate boards have 40% uh, 40% of um, uh, workers and unions representative and dramatically increasing the power of unions and giving them rights that they could have never imagined that they would have. And, you know, breaking up big tech. She's got a whole plan on how to break up big tech. And then destroying Wall Street. She's got a whole plan on holding Wall Street accountable and going after private equity, going after debt financing and just completely restructuring our financial world. There has not been a president this is the most ambitious plan to redo America ever in the history of the United States. It's bigger, than, much bigger, not even on the same plane as the biggest attempt, which is the New Deal under, um, under FDR. And it's bigger than the Great Society after, after Truman. She wants to expand Social Security. She wants to have a wealth tax, which is probably unconstitutional. She wants to, uh, you know, uh, completely break up the big farming conglomerates. She wants to massively subsidize farming, increase the subsidies, change the incentives to reduce them for big farms and to give it to... I mean, she wants... And, and it's not surprising, by the way, that conservatives, many conservatives, like Tucker Carlson, like Jim Cramer, somebody says, love her. Because, yeah, they want to break up big tech. They want to break up big Wall Street. They want to help the American worker. They want anti-trade stuff. They want to help the farmers. She has an excessive lobbying tax. You lobby excessively, according to Elizabeth Warren. You get a special tax on it. Then, of course, we're going to have universal child care. You're going to have universal health care. Uh, you know, a single-payer Medicare for all. Um, you're going to have student let debt forgiveness. You're going to have massive regulations on universities. Uh, we're going to have a Green New Deal. She's embraced the Green New Deal. I mean, this is the most ambitious plan to redo American society than any president has ever suggested. Any presidential candidate has ever suggested. And she knows none of it works. She knows she can't pay for it. She knows it's a disaster. She doesn't care. She doesn't care. She wants people like Elizabeth Warren. They want power over others. They want, they, they'll do anything. They'll manipulate anybody. They'll say anything to gain that power. To gain that power. Well, yeah, Tucker did a whole show. Somebody says, no way Tucker supports her. Tucker did a whole show in support of her Economic Patriotism Act. Tucker, who said, who gave a talk, gave a lecture that I talked about. Titled, title, Big Business Hates Your Family. Take is a huge fan of many, if not most, of Elizabeth Warren's economic policies. I've always argued, I've always argued that the right and the left will converge. There is very little difference between the conservative nationalism that I talked about a few weeks ago and Elizabeth Warren, when it comes to trade, when it comes to economics, there is very little difference between them. They might disagree about immigration, but that's only because I think Elizabeth Warren has to have a pro-immigration stance to get voters, to get her left-wing voters. But she hates immigrants. And the labor movement doesn't like immigration. The labor movement hates immigration. And if you give all these legal protections to the unions, the unions will immediately flip to becoming anti-immigration, which they've been their entire existence. And Elizabeth Warren will mimic the Republicans in immigration as well. The left and the right are not fundamentally different. Is her, is her foreign policy that different? Groveling before the world? Is her tariffs in China, would they be different? No. No. She might say a few positive words about Hong Kong. She might actually say they're the good guys. That'd be an improvement. The left and the right converge. I mean, in a sense, yeah, the only thing that the right still is not completely caved on is universal health care. 
It's Medicare for all. And Trump believes in universal health care. It's just there's too much opposition in Congress for him to ally himself with the Democrats and get it passed. But he could in a second term where he doesn't care. Where he's trying to set it up for his daughter to be president. I don't know. Who knows? So go to a website. I encourage you to go to a website, read the stuff. It's just strikingly fascist. It's like the government will control corporations, will control everything. And just a cherry on the top of this. So, you know, and I haven't talked about this. And I need to do a whole show about this, and I will. But uh, you know that um, the Business Roundtable, the Business Roundtable issued this statement saying, we are no longer primarily going to focus on shareholder wealth. We are going to take into account the interest of all stakeholders. And Elizabeth Warren was like, yes, even the Business Roundtable is on my side. So she wrote them a letter, and I'm trying to, I've got the letter here on my screen, but I've got all these other things here as well. One second, I'll have the letter in a second. Here it is, all right? And she writes, so she writes to Jamie Dimon, who signed on to the Business Roundtable, declaring that they are no longer going to focus on maximizing shareholder wealth. And we can talk about that uh, separately. But she says, I write in regard to the Business Roundtable's new statement on the purpose of a corporation issued on August 12, 19, 2019. This new statement marked a potential significant change. It reversed the Business Roundtable's troubling position that corporations exist principally to serve shareholders. And da -da -da, she goes on and then she writes, I write for information about the tangible actions you intend to take to implement the principles including whether to make good on your commitment. You will implement the steps laid out in the Accountable Capitalism Act I plan to reintroduce in the coming weeks. So she's basically saying, you better play ball with me. You better support the things that I believe mean. And this is what happens to business every single time. They cave. They cave. And then, then they really cave. Then what we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourunbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...